The Hon. David Mr. Parker. Speaker, Mr Speaker, uh, before I attack him, <laughs> I will say I do have some respect for the Hon. Bill English. And can I say oh, in respect of his gross. speech, although I disagree with parts of it, which I will cover, he at least did cover the government's proposed programme this year, thin though it is. In contrast, the Prime Minister, a couple of weeks ago when he delivered the Prime Minister's statement, lay it on the table and then proceeded to act like a court jester telling jokes and attacking the opposition rather than a talking about his own programme. Bill English uh, just gave a, a speech then and he criticised the increases in spending from the last government. In question time, he was good enough to acknowledge that by the end of the last government, Labor had reduced government debt growth from 38 to 18 per cent and actually net debt virtually to zero. When you included financial assets like the uh, Cullen Fund, it was in a positive balance. And since then, we know uh, debt's grown. He then said, well, of course, the problem was the increase in government spending. Well, what were the biggest increases in government spending by the Labor Party? Well, the biggest one Everywhere. was family, family tax credits, working for families yeah. tax credits, which the government, to this day, although their tax cuts effectively for people, they actually count them as spending. And at the time, the Prime Minister, the now Prime Minister, and I think Bill English, called them communism by stealth. So that was the biggest increase in spending. They called it communism by stealth, even though it was tax cuts. Have they reversed it? No. They haven't. What was the next big initiative? Well, R&D tax credits they didn't like. Did they reverse those? Yes, they did reverse those. KiwiSaver, they said that they didn't like. Have they reversed KiwiSaver? Well, they've stripped back some of the incentives, so it's not working as well. They've taken away the $1,000 kickstart payment that gave hope to young people as they started on their savings journey. Uh, but no, they haven't done away with KiwiSaver. Interest-free student loans. Remember how vexed they were with interest-free student loans in 2005. They were apoplectic about interest-free student loans. Another increase in government spending under the last government. Have they reversed them? No, they haven't, because they were good policy. Mr Speaker, having dealt with the misrepresentation of the prior Labor government, who left the, good, the government books in such good order that Bill English was forced to acknowledge in 2008 that, quotes, this was the rainy day that governments had been saving for because we ran nine surpluses in a row, he then didn't say much about what's gone up and what's gone down under national. Well, what's gone up? What's happened to government debt? Well, we know government debt's gone up. Net debt was down to zero. It's up about 60 or $70 billion, a huge increase in government debt. Mr Speaker, what about growth? Has growth gone up or down? Well, growth rates in the thousands were held a bit high by um, increased rates of private borrowing. I'll acknowledge that. But we were criticised by National for having growth rates of between 3 and 4 per cent. What's the growth rate been in the last year, Dr Smith? 2.4, Per capita, zero. Per capita growth rates, the per person rate of growth in New Zealand over the last year has been zero, and that's even with the huge amount that is being spent in Canterbury on the Canterbury rebuild. Nick Tuffy, uh, ASB, is the author of that calculation. Per capita growth rates over the last year have been zero, and indeed there have been prior uh, references uh, to that from likes of Mr Glass, another investment banker who made similar comments last year. What about exports? A great indicator of health or otherwise of the economy. Well, the government came to power when exports were over 30 per cent of GDP, and they promised they were going to increase them to 40 per cent of GDP. What has happened to exports? They are down to between 27 and 28 per cent of GDP, and the government's target of raising them to 40 per cent of GDP is, uh, is shattered. So much for the brighter future they were promising. What about home ownership? Well, Bill English might say that they've got uh, the, these huge public meetings that they're having in Auckland are a sign that things are good in Auckland. Actually, people are coming out in droves because they're protesting about the state of the housing market in Auckland. And Dr Smith's doing his best, but it's not good enough because after eight years in power, we've got the highest home, ownership, highest home prices ever 
in Auckland, a disgraceful average price in Auckland of around $900,000. People cannot save to buy a house in Auckland if they're an ordinary waged worker, and they have to inherit money to do so. And that's the reality of life under national. Really, the privileged few succeed, and most people struggle to get ahead. Lowest home ownership rate in over 60 years and still declining. And if there is any part of the Kiwi dream that is more fundamental than home ownership in New Zealand, well, I don't know what it is. You know, a half acre quarter flag in Pavlova Paradise used to be the name of the book. Now people cannot afford their slice of our paradise, and we've got the lowest rate of home ownership since the 1950s, indeed since the 1951 census, over 60 years ago, and it continues to, to decline. And there are measures that could be taken by the government to make it better. It does need to roll up its sleeves and actually build some affordable houses to control land supply in respect of some big subdivisions that are needed, to actually stamp their foot and say, we do need intensification in parts of Auckland if we're going to have the rates of net migration that this government insists on inflicting upon Auckland, making, throwing fat on the fire and making these things even worse. Well, what's happened to wages? We heard Nick Smith saying average wages are up. And I read the Prime Minister's statement in this regard, and the paragraph in it said, wages are going up. And then you could see, quite obviously, someone had gone through proofreading and they'd inserted the word average at the front of it. It sort of read rather sort of bluntly the way it was phrased, and you could see it was a late addition. Well, why is that? Why are they focusing on the average wage? Because in truth, we know that wage increases are concentrated <coughs> at the top 10 per cent of the population and that earnings for most New Zealanders are stagnant. Indeed, I think the latest statistic was that 46 per cent of New Zealanders got no wage increase last year. Mr Speaker, the income gaps are growing just like the wealth gaps, Mr Speaker. On environment, I heard Nick Smith here today heralding his collaborative process outcome, uh, saying that they've got to an end point by when rivers have to be fenced against dairy cattle and beef cattle. 2030 for our mid-country mid and 2025 for our flatland. Different if you're a dairy farmer, but the dairy boom's over. The pressure environmentally is now coming from the beef boom. No wonder the NGO in New Zealand that is most connected with fresh water quality, New Zealand Fish and Game Council, the people who represent the tens and thousands of New Zealanders who every year get money out of their own pocket to pay for a licence to go fishing in our riverways, they pulled out of the Land and Water Forum because they were so disgusted with these consensual outcomes being lowest common denominator that they said, we're out of here, we're not up for an outcome that says we're not even going to keep our dairy beef and our beef cattle out of our waterways until 2025 or 2030. Mr Speaker, our rivers, after eight years of the National Party, are getting dirtier still. I see that. I'm a person who swims in rivers, I fish, I tramp. Outside of our national parks, it is a disgrace the number of our waterways that can no longer be safely swum in because under Nick Smith, the minimum standard that is being required is wadeability. That's clean enough to walk through, but not clean enough to swim in and put your head under because you'll get sick. That is a disgraceful bottom line, Dr Smith, and something that you should not be proud of as the Minister for the Environment. Mr Speaker, education. Do you know we've reached the parlous position in New Zealand where the OECD say the, big, the cause of the big tail that we've got in New Zealand of underperformance amongst some of our students is caused by their economic deprivation. The gaps have got so big in New Zealand that our kids at our poor schools don't get ahead. I thought it was disgraceful a couple of weeks ago. I was ashamed to live in the country where a school providing free swimming lessons in South Auckland, and too few kids learn to swim these days, a substantial proportion of the class were not participating because their parents could not afford togs. And there had to be a public fundraising effort to raise the money for them to buy togs. That's what's happening in New Zealand. We've got people living in cars, in garages, 
and parents can't even afford togs when they're getting free swimming lessons. Mr. Speaker.